Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today, we are going to continue our lesson on cellular respiration and fermentation. Respiration is one of the important chemical processes that carried out by all living organisms, including plant, animal, and human, in order to release energy required for life processes. Food that we eat had been digested to form glucose, which then undergoes aerobic cellular respiration to produce energy in the process called cellular respiration. From previous lesson, you know that aerobic cellular respiration involves the process of glycolysis, link reaction, and Krebs cycle. So, today we are going to discuss the last phase of cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. For this subtopic about oxidative phosphorylation, there are three learning objectives involved. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to first illustrate to explain electron transport chain, second, explain chemiosmosis and proton motive force, and lastly, you should be able to explain complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose in active cells to produce 38 ATPs. Now, let us begin with overview of the oxidative phosphorylation. Let's watch this video. Our body is made up of trillions of cells. They all require energy to function. This energy is created within our cells, in the mitochondria. Here, food is converted into chemical energy called ATP. ATP is released by the mitochondria so cells can use it. Mitochondria consist of two membranes, an outer membrane, separating it from the cytosol, and an inner membrane, surrounding the so-called matrix. The area between these membranes is called the intermembrane space. ATP is generated at the inner membrane of mitochondria by an efficient mechanism called oxidative phosphorylation involving several membrane protein complexes. Nutrients provide high energy electrons in the form of NADH which are used by the protein complexes to pump protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. This continuous pumping creates a proton gradient where the positively charged protons are attracted to the more negative matrix. When the protons re-enter the matrix through the ATP synthase protein complex, they catalyze the production of ATP. From the video shown, we know that oxidative phosphorylation is the formation of ATP using energy derived from redox reaction of an electron transport chain. Oxidative phosphorylation involves the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. What is the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis? Electron transport chain or also known as ETC, is a sequence of electron carrier molecules that shuttle electrons down a series of redox reactions that release energy used to make ATP. Chemiosmosis is the production of ATP via proton movement through ATP synthase across a membrane driven by the proton gradient. The NADH and FADH2 molecules formed during the first three stages of aerobic cellular respiration contain a pair of high energy electrons. This means that NADH and FADH2 are the source of electrons. NADH and FADH2 donates electrons to the electron transport chain which powers ATP synthesis via oxidative phosphorylation. 
electrons from NADH and FADH2 move from less electronegative electron carrier to the more electronegative electron carrier down the ETC chain. Mitochondria is a double membrane organelle. The inner membrane of the mitochondria is folded to form cristae. The electron transport chain is located at the cristae of the mitochondria. Electron transport chain has a series of electron carrier molecules as its components. The molecules are NADH dehydrogenase, ubiquinone or coenzyme Q, succinate dehydrogenase, cytochrome C reductase, cytochrome C, and cytochrome C oxidase. What would happen when NADH reach electron transport chain? Let us look at the electron transport chain pathway in detail. NADH molecules from the glycolysis, link reaction and Krebs cycle carry their electron to the inner mitochondrial membrane. NADH passes electron to the NADH dehydrogenase. NADH is oxidized to form NAD+. As high energy electron is transferred, some of the energy is harnessed to pump proton out from the matrix into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. An ADH dehydrogenase then passes electron to ubiquinone. Ubiquinone molecule that receives electron is reduced. An ADH dehydrogenase molecule which donates electron is oxidized. Ubiquinone, which is a mobile electron carrier, passes electron to cytochrome C reductase. Ubiquinone is oxidized while cytochrome C reductase is reduced. Cytochrome C reductase passes electron to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C reductase is oxidized. Cytochrome C is reduced. As electron is transferred, energy is used to pump proton into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. Cytochrome C, a mobile electron carrier, passes electrons to cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C is oxidized while cytochrome C oxidase is reduced. Cytochrome C oxidase passes electron to oxygen, the last electron acceptor. After receiving electrons, oxygen combines with hydrogen ions and water molecules is produced. As electron is transferred, proton is pumped into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. What would happen when FADH2 reached the electron transport chain? FADH2 passes electrons to succinate dehydrogenase. The electron then we will pass to the other electron carrier from ubiquinone to cytochrome C reductase to cytochrome C and lastly cytochrome C oxidase. Electron from cytochrome C oxidase will be passed to oxygen atom which act as final electron acceptor. Oxygen ion reacts with hydrogen ion in mitochondria matrix forming water molecule. We can see that for FADH2, there are only two places involved the pumping of proton. 
at the cytochrome C reductase complex and cytochrome C oxidase. This explains why the production of ATP differ between the NADH and FADH2. The second part of the oxidative phosphorylation is chemiosmosis. The ETC or the electron transport chain uses the energy flow of electron to pump proton from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. As a result, higher concentration of proton in the intermembrane space compared to the mitochondria matrix. This produce proton gradient across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Proton gradient across the inner membrane creates proton motive force. The force drives proton in the intermembrane space to flow back into mitochondrial matrix. Protons enter the mitochondrial matrix to the proton channel provided by the ATP synthase. ATP synthase uses the energy of the proton gradient to catalyze the synthesis of ATP by phosphorylating ADP to ATP. Utilization of NADH and FADH2 One FADH2 transfer a pair of electrons generates two ATPs, while one NADH transfers a pair of electron generates three ATPs in oxidative phosphorylation. We know that glycolysis produces two NADH, while link reaction produces also two NADH. In Krebs cycle, six NADH and two FADH2 produce. So, how many ATPs actually produce? All right, let us calculate how many ATP yield from complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose. The oxidation of glucose involves glycolysis, link reaction, and Krebs cycle. In glycolysis, Two ATP is produced in substrate level phosphorylation. Two NADH also produce, which then will generate six ATPs through oxidative phosphorylation. For link reaction, link reaction produce two NADH, so six ATP produced here. Krebs cycle. 2 ATP is produced by substrate level phosphorylation. 18 ATP is produced from 6 NADH and 4 ATP produced from 2 molecules of FADH2. So, from Krebs cycles, total 24 ATP produced. Here, we can conclude that the complete oxidation of glucose in active cells produce 38 ATPs. How much energy does it cost to do your body's work? A single cell uses about 10 million ATPs molecule per second and recycle all of its ATP molecules about every 20 to 30 seconds. Wow! It shows us why cellular respiration is very important. It also explains why exposure to cyanide will cause death within a second. Okay students, we have completed our lesson about cellular respiration. Let's test your understanding by answering this question. Thank you.